Th this is, is me in 30 years. I've done, I've done well. <laughs> that would have been a pretty unique experience, putting this black shell through the coffee press and it coming out bright pink. Yeah, that was yeah, pretty cool moment. One of those very rare Eureka moments. T-Rex. Yes. I, a T -rex. I, I wanna, I, I wanna see T-Rex. There's no question about it. Today we're conducting an interview of my future self. So, yep. He's getting into a time machine going 30-something years into the future, finds himself and asks whether the choices were the right ones. Exactly. So this is me 30 years in the future. Still the same hairdo. Yeah. My name's Seb Bland. I'm a student at ANU studying earth science. And in the future, I would like to be a, potentially like to be a researcher looking and investigating into early life and how that can contribute to society in general today. I'm Jochen Box. I'm a professor of geobiology at the Research School of Earth Sciences at the Australian National University. As a geologist, I think a nice interim ice-breaking question is, what is your favourite rock, Jochen? My favourite rock? Uh, the mean mineralogical type? Yeah. Oof. I, I think for my profession it would be a, a deep black shell right. full of organic matter, 30%. Absolutely love it. One of those rocks that you actually can light with a light and actually do burn. Flammable rocks, yep. love it. Wow. So 1.1 billion years old, uh, we extracted this, my favorite rock, the black shale. Yep. And you wouldn't believe it, but out of this black shale extracted with a solvent called dichloromethane, the extract was actually bright purple pink. No way, that's uh, amazing. Un unbelievable, yes. But that would have been a pretty, pretty unique experience, putting this, this black shale through the coffee press and it coming out bright pink. Were you uh, yeah, surprised? So I, my experience was a different one because I was sitting in my office and opposite of my office is my laboratory. Yeah. We always have all doors open so if something happens you can hear it, so like a scream. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I did hear a scream. Yeah. It was my uh, PhD student Noor Gunnerli yeah. from, from Germany and she, she screamed. And I ran into the lab and I, I walked there, she's sitting there staring at the thing and I look at it and I see this, this, this purple band running down that silica column. And yeah, that was a yeah, pretty cool moment. One of those very rare Eureka moments. If you are sitting at a dinner party and you got the big shots around the table, Brian Schmidt's there, everyone, how do you explain what you do to them? Oh, I've done that a thousand times to yes. actually quite some hot shots. Not to Brian though yet, but for example, to the treasurer of the United States, the president of Harvard University. And uh, I usually start explaining you know, what is geological time? And I usually do this in, in stacks of time. So I think of time from the bottom to the top. So here's the present, here's the bottom. Earth is 4.6 billion years old. And I'm working somewhere in this period of time when life was just microscopic. We can't see anything with our eyes and we use chemical traces to find out what happened. So that's, that's what I do. What do you think, when you look back on your entire career, it's been illustrious. What is, if you have made any, a misstep, do you think? Has there been any points that you've looked back and gone, oh, maybe I should have done something else here? Ah, uh, you, you learn a lot from mistakes. Hopefully you do, yes. it's very important. And it's usually um, interpersonal things, things that you do to or with other people. For example, one thing I definitely learned is if you make a discovery that disproves someone else's discovery, mm -hmm. in a way that makes that person maybe even look stupid because they really have overlooked something quite obvious, um, tell them in advance, invite them to be part of that discovery, put them on that paper. I published one paper um, where I didn't do that. It didn't, it didn't even occur to me. And then years later, I visited that person and I had dinner with him and he told me back then that was pretty painful. And I went, wow, I hadn't even thought about it. And so that was definitely a big mistake. Science is done by people. And, yes. and sometimes you, you think, hey, science has nothing got to do with people. It's all objective. Uh, that's pretty wrong. Yeah, of course. So you were telling me that you found these old fossils and it all started your collection back when you were around my age, a bit younger. So back that, in that point in time, if you could, let's say, bend the laws of physics and take a time machine to any point in the geological past, where would you go? And looking back now on the 30 years experience you've had, would that change? Oh, wow. Well, it definitely would have changed a lot through time. Back then when I found this fossil, I would definitely would have gone back into the middle Triassic to see what, you know, Germany looked like to, during a cold Muschelkalk sea that existed. Um, I think I would have better goals now. But just having one point to go back to, that's bloody cruel. I, I don't <laughs> think I could have so many things, so many burning questions and things I would like to see. The first one, of course, from my age of four, we had on our Kellogg's packs every week a dinosaur. Um, T-Rex. 
Yeah. Right? Uh, T-Rex. I want to. I want to <laughs> see T-Rex. There's no question about it. Not for scientific curiosity. I just want to know whether that thing looked like in the 1970s when I first got to know about T-Rex, which was back then, really looking like a lizard with razor sharp long teeth and was gray in color with warts and it had these red glowing eyes, or whether it looked like a big pink yellow chicken with a, <laughs> with a cockatoo crest, right? Which is now we know probably actually more likely. It right. probably looked pretty funny. Uh, I, I want to see T-Rex, so I, I need a tank or at least a big cage yes, that I want to yes. be eaten. But T-Rex is it, yeah, being, being 20, I actually do not really recall where I would have gone. So where would I have gone? I think my interest being peaked through geobiology and stuff like that, uh, definitely into the early time, um, the rise of algae and that sort of period of time. I know it's a boring, boring part, but it'd be cool to just see what life is like, the planet with like nothing living. Oh, the, the Carboniferous would be pretty cool. The rainforests everywhere, just warm. Well, bring me one of those dragonflies. Yeah. 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 Dragonflies. <laughs> or there was, big, there was big spiders, or there's three meter long uh, millipedes. Okay, I'm not going back there anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Has it become more difficult in this day and age with the, the changing climate in the field that you're looking at, especially with these hydrocarbons? Um, because I'm not interested in the commercial part, and what I do with these very ancient molecules is still very, very exciting, it hasn't become too difficult. Right. Uh, it has generally become more difficult because the Australian Research Council has less money, wants to spend the money for more applied industrial research. So the total pool of money is shrinking, but the number of people asking for money is not. So yeah. the success rates are dropping. So is it tough? Are you finding it? Are you finding that as a... Okay, I'm pretty sure you will at some point ask the question about what's, you know, what's the things that are not so fun. Yes. <laughs> and I can tell you that writing grant proposals will be for most scientists the most horrible part of the year. I, the one thing I'm not interested about is writing about people and definitely not about myself. Right. And then if you have to write about yourself how absolutely great you are and what you've achieved in the past and what you will achieve in the future and that you are the hot shot in the next 10 years you will make all these discoveries, it's nauseating. It's totally nauseating, and, but you just gotta do it. Okay, so uh, you came into the future to talk to your future self. Uh, see how it's going, is science fun, science is super fun. Um, not regretting one second. Um, but will you change your decisions? Have you learned something where you think, oh, I'm going to do some things differently now? Well, it's been a pleasure to come and talk to my future self. Um, I learned, I've learned lots of things, especially the, the process, the behind the scenes process that isn't really like portrayed to students, the, the writing, the, the, the grants to get the money and how that, process goes but I don't think so I think the the good and the interest of trying to find new things and increase the knowledge bank of the human race vastly outweighs the negative downside of having to find the time to put into writing these grants and definitely you've broadened my horizon on the areas of science which you were into and which sound vastly amazingly interesting which I would absolutely love to go in and look at following your footsteps my future footsteps next year yeah awesome